Uh, my first presentation here is on the legislative update. The original intention of this was to be a wrap-up of the legislative session. Uh, as you know, that's not possible today because the legislative session isn't over, so this is more of a status report for what's going on in progress. So what I've done is set this up as a timeline to kind of walk through what's happened during session, and you'll notice that there's no end of session note on that timeline. But what we have done is uh, set the uh, bills we're going to talk about um, into five different categories, uh, plan funding, left to board bills, the select committee request bill, uh, other pension bills, and other bills of interest, which in this session are uh, workers' compensation bills. So plan funding, this is the the most interesting part of the conversation and uh, the most speculative because the budget is not done yet. But uh, we think we can talk about some of the stuff that's been going on of, of, that's of interest to the board. Uh, in all versions of the budget that have been passed by both the House and the Senate, the contribution rates that you've passed have been fully funded. So it looks like that is going to be what this final budget is going to have. That's good news. Um, the ombudsman position that you had requested, um, it's funded in the House budget but not in the Senate budget. It's a little bit um, ambiguous because as an unappropriated agency, nothing in either budget bill has anything about the left two board. Um, so where we have to drill down to is in the agency detail. And so the agency detail report in the House has the ombudsman. In the Senate, it still doesn't as of the last Senate budget passed on the 8th. Uh, we remain hopeful that the final budget will include that piece. So, but we won't know until hopefully uh, the end of this month. Hopefully we won't find out in July. Um, the other piece is the alternate revenue payment. Um, and just for a little bit of background, that was uh, passed in 2008, I believe. And the way the statute is set up, there's a series of subsections where if the target is hit, there's going to be a set payment paid at different times. So what both the House and the Senate budget have done is um, taken that statute, amended it by pulling out the subsection that provides for a payment in 2013. So the, the good news, the silver lining, is that the, but the, the statute is still there and prospective future payments are still on the table. Um, but so far, it looks like it's not going to happen in 2013. But again, sure. um, the budget isn't finished yet. So, okay. Hey, Paul, did, the, uh, did we hit the target? We did this time, yes. So uh, this was, as I recall, this was related to interstate monies coming in through Internet purchases and stuff. Originally, that's how that bill was crafted. It's no longer attached to that. It's just, just targets for revenue? Yes. yes. It, it was, a, yeah, originally targeted towards income right. sales tax that was yeah. the rationale but yeah. we so we, we hit the revenue target yeah right and so if the statute well if the statute weren't amended then we the, would be getting the, yes except that the way the statute's written it's the the payment is subject to appropriation so the the way the statute's written it's not an ironclad yes the legislature has to do right. this but but, yeah, if the statute had not been amended, then presumably the payment would be being made. And I think it's $20 million this? Would have been Ten. $20? Ten. Ten. F five to the uh, local public uh, safety mm -hmm. enhancement account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other half to uh, left plan two. Boy, the you guys pull account. that one off. That will be really cool. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's quite a deal. So it's always subject to appropriation each time through. That's the, way, that the way the statute's written, yes. Uh, the next issue, uh, these are left plan two board. Um, I called them bills, even though you actually had one official bill, but there was a second one that came up during session that sort of counts as a left board bill. Um, the first one is the Health Care Authority Technical Corrections Bill that uh, was brought to you last interim by the Health Care Correct by the Health Care Authority. Uh, that bill made it through the House, got through committee in the Senate, and then died in Senate rules. So that isn't going to happen this year. Uh, the other bill, which I'll be talking about in more detail in the Medicare update later in the agenda, is House Bill 1868. Um, basically, this was something that the board didn't have a chance to look at last year because the issue didn't come up until January after session had already started. But you'll remember a few years back, uh, the board had sponsored a policy initiative to provide for reimbursement of medical expenses for catastrophic disability retirees. And it turned out that the way the statute was written, there was an unintended gap in that coverage. and. Um, somebody fell in the gap. So that's basically what 1868 was about, was to fix that. And uh, that bill was passed and signed by the governor. Uh, so now um, catastrophic uh, disability retirees will receive that reimbursement. The, the language in the statute um, does limit it to the COBRA amount that would have the person would have gotten had they still been on COBRA. Because in this particular case, Wynn Loyland, the, the gentleman that this happened to, 
he was on COBRA and then his COBRA expired and there was no other program available for him to jump onto, so there was no mechanism for reimbursement. So that's now been fixed. Uh, the next is the Select Committee request bills, um, or bill, I should say. There was a retiree return to work bill, and this was basically another cleanup bill. Um, in 2011, uh, one of a seemingly never ending series of retiree return to work bills was passed by the legislature. And there were a couple of apparently unintended consequences that um, I think overly restricted, or at least the view is these overly restricted the, the rules. And the intent of this bill was to fix that. It was uh, made it through committee in both the House and Senate and uh, did not make it out of rules. So that is still out there and no doubt will come back again. Paul, did that have a fiscal note? I don't believe it did. But I'm So it was a no-cost bill and it still didn't get passed? Let me check. Dave, no. no fiscal note. Yeah, it was a no-cost bill. And mm -hmm. so, but it didn't make it, out of, uh, didn't make it out of rules in either did, House. Did, but it got through the fiscal committees? Yeah, got, it got through the committees, but then died in rules. Why that is, I can't really tell you. But um, there are some other pension bills, uh, and these uh, th there were two different excess compensation bills that came out, and, th and these bills grew out of the work that was done last interim by both the Select Committee and the uh, uh, Washington State Institute of Public Policy on uh, pension issues and excess compensation. As you probably remember, this was sort of driven by some overtime concerns. Uh, so Senator Bailey uh, put in an excess compensation bill 5392. Um, that bill would have required an excess compensation billing to employers if the uh, final average salary was more than 150 percent more of what had been in the prior period, which would left to would be a five-year period. That bill made it through committee, uh, died in rules, and then the proposal showed up again in 5916. Uh, toward the genesis of this bill, I'm sure you all remember there were a series of newspaper articles during session about left one um, disability and retirement issues. And uh, partially in response to that, 5916 uh, had a provision in it that would have allowed local governments to, uh, presumably to appeal uh, determinations of medical benefits for left one members to the Department of Retirement Systems. Um, and as part of that bill, the excess compensation provision was put on there again, although in this version, the limitation was dropped to 125% rather than 150%. Uh, both of those bills were heard, but did not pass out of the Senate, and so never made it over to the House. And presumably, that's over with for the session. The other bills uh, that I think are of interest, although they specifically excluded left plan two, was this move to a uh, potentially defined contribution plan, what they were calling the Public Employee Savings Plan. And there were two different bills on that. Um, the, uh, let me make sure I get these numbers right. 5851 was Senator Bailey's bill, and that would have provided for um, new hires to go into a new defined contribution plan. They were calling the Public Employee Savings Plan. It would have been an option, though, and, and Plan 3 would have been the default option for somebody coming in as a new employee. The other bill took a little bit um, more aggressive stance, 5856, and it would have mandated all current employees, or excuse me, all new hires would have been mandated into the defined contribution plan, and all current employees who are less than age 45 would have been mandated into the new defined contribution plan. Uh, both of those bills were heard, but I don't believe either one was passed out of committee. It certainly didn't make it to the Senate floor. Uh, other bills of interest, and again, these are, these are workers' compensation bills, um, <clears throat> which to date haven't made it through. Um, 5124 uh, changed benefit eligibility requirements. And I think the, the general tenor of these bills was to somehow get a handle on workers' comp costs uh, because there's some big bills uh, in the offing, as I understand it. Um, so 5124 made it through the committee, didn't get out of Senate rules. 5125, which would have amended the definition of occupational disease, that didn't get a hearing. Um, the bill that I think is still alive at this point is 5127, and the reason it's still alive is it's part of the package of policy bills that the uh, Senate Majority Coalition has said we need to have, or had said earlier at least, we need to have in order to have a budget deal. Uh, it's not clear whether that's still on the table or not, but we'll find out in the next couple of weeks, I guess. 5127, what that does is it lowers the age for the uh, cash out of workers' compensation claim. Uh, there was a bill passed a couple of years ago where if you were 55 or older, you could just get a cash out of your, I believe, your time loss claim. And um, what 5127 would propose is to lower that age to 40. Um, and uh, it has passed the Senate twice. It has been ignored by the House twice and is now back in Senate uh, 
was sent back to Senate um, rules as you know that happens when the, when the new session starts all the bills that are in the go back to the House of Origin the Senate now has it on third reading so uh, whether the Senate's going to pass it again or not we, you know, we'll find out in the next couple of weeks and that's all my prepared remarks I'd be happy to answer any questions Glenn? On the, going back to the more aggressive public employee savings plan, the age 45 mandatory, mm -hmm. was that of all plans? No, not for left two, but I think the, the plans that were covered were uh, PERS and uh, TERS and SIRS. And I don't remember, I'm not sure if PSERS was covered or not. So, the, so let me see, just make sure I know that I, we don't need to delve into it, but I want to make sure I understand that content. So they were proposing to take current defined benefit members and force them into a defined contribution plan for the remainder of their time? Yes, if they, if they were under age 45. All right. Mark? Yeah, I have a question on the catastrophic disability, the, the reimbursement. Mm -hmm. um, you said that was tied to the COBRA rates, so potentially each employer would have a different rate, and that's how those uh, folks would be reimbursed? Depending upon what their employer what, what their employer would charge them in essence for Cobra, right? right? As I understand it, there was there was a desire to make sure that it wasn't just an open ended cost. That it would be mm -hmm. just go out and get whatever insurance you want. We'll pay for it. So uh -huh. they had to link it to something, and the thing they linked right. to was Cobra. But you're right that that's going to vary by employer, and and also uh, if the person is going out and getting insurance on their own, there's a pretty good chance that it's going to be more expensive than Cobra. So there's going to be probably a gap there in the premium. Okay. Okay, any other questions for Paul? All right, thank you, Paul. Thank you.